you for joining us for our new ESG webinar series. Today's topic will focus on how brands can connect more authentically with new Canadians. So let's get started. It's my pleasure to welcome today's first speaker, Mike College, President of Ipsos Canada's Public Affairs Practice. Mike, you have the floor. Thank you, Ellen, and uh, and thank you, Robin, for uh, for for leading this today. And I want to thank everybody who's uh, who's joined the webinar uh, so far to listen in. Um, I'm also the ESG lead for Canada, so I'm going to steal a few minutes of Robin's time at the start of this webinar, just to point out that this webinar is a, is one in a series on ESG that we're we're running over the summer and into the fall. Uh, the series started about a month month and a half ago with Sean Simpson and Megan Miller from our corporate rep team. Who presented on how organizations can can use and leverage ESG or their ESG actions and commitments to improve their overall corporate reputation. And then a few weeks after that, uh, Ted Doring, who leads our Creative Excellence Group, did a great session on the role of sustainability in advertising, and he offered up some some best practice on how we can all do better and, and achieve our goals, and sort of how you can do sustainable advertising and still cut through what he called the sea of sameness. Um, in a couple weeks, uh, well, actually in about a month from now, Dion Daly from Innovation Service Line is going to discuss the role of sustainable packaging and innovation. But today, uh, today we have uh, Robin Seed with us, and uh, Robin is the lead for all of our online communities in Canada. Uh, and in addition to talking about newcomers to Canada, he actually is a newcomer, a relatively new newcomer to Canada, as you'll, you'll hear when he starts to speak and he talks about his story. Uh, he, he's built a panel of new arrivals to Canada, um, a community that we talk to on a regular basis. And through the work that he's done for our clients and for our own learning with Ipsos, I think he's uncovered some really great insights on the journey, on the emotional uh, feelings and how people are dealing, how newcomers should feel when they come to Canada. And he's added a lot of depth and understanding to that journey that is there's really second to none from, from my perspective. I suspect uh, you're all here because you realize that immigration um, and understanding newcomers is a, is a really good opportunity for business, but I think you also know that uh, given Canada's birth rate, given our need for immigration to keep the economy going, uh, growing and to keep our society sort of vibrant and, and as diverse as we would all like it to be, it's crucial that we make the best of each newcomer's individual journey so that we're successful as possible and as we bring in more and more immigrants, which Robin's going to talk about. I think given Robin's background as a newcomer, his ongoing conversations that he's having with this community in Canada, probably make him the best person in Canada to help us do this. So Robin, as the best person in Canada to talk to us about newcomers, I don't want you to feel any pressure, but I'm gonna hand it over to you for the uh, the webinar, thank you. Great, thanks Mike. Appreciate the, the nice introduction. Um, hey everybody, welcome to today's webinar. I'm really looking forward to sharing some insights from our newcomer community. Um, and really, hopefully I can give you a a full understanding of the journey that newcomers go through, an emotional understanding of the journey that they go through when they come to Canada. But before I get into that, let me introduce myself a little bit more. I know Mike's already done a good job of that, but um, I'm sure you've noticed by now with my accent uh, and Mike mentioned, I am a newcomer. I've been with Ipsos for the last 10 years, but I've only been in Canada for the last year. Um, it's actually one year and about Two months, uh, two months that I've been here. So still relatively new. I've survived my first winter, um, and I'm really looking forward to sharing these insights with you. I must say that I've really enjoyed working with this community as being a newcomer myself. The stories that they could share with us um, were things that I could really relate to myself. Everything that they were busy sharing with us, I almost had a story myself that that I could relate to everything that they were saying. So <clears throat> I know that there's a lot of newcomers, possible newcomers on this call as well. So as I go through this presentation, I'm really hoping that I share some stories and there's some things that you can pick up that you can actually relate to yourself. So we know that New Canadians has been a hot topic for some time now. It's a hot topic right now, more so than ever, and that's not gonna change in the future. New Canadians are going to continuously be a hot topic in Canada. And why is that? We all know that Canada has an aging population. We know that they have one of the world's lowest birth rates, which means that the population is in decline. And the only way for Canada to increase their population is through immigration. 
So I've put a little snippet here from a news article from CBC News. And it, what it basically says is in 2022, Canada welcomed over a million newcomers into the country. About 400,000 of those were permanent residents and another 600,000 of those were temporary residents, whether they came over on a work permit or student visa. Um, but doing this research and speaking to um, a lot of these newcomers that have come here, the people that are here on a temporary permit, some of them, not all of them, but some of them are actually going to work to convert that to permanent residents. That said, it's a million people coming into the country over a year, which is huge. That is a lot of people. These are people that have been in Canada for one year or less. All of them need products and services. They need brands to help them along their journey, regardless if they're permanent residents or if they're temporary residents. So one million people is huge. And because of this, marketing to newcomers really requires different approaches and brands are challenged by this every single week every single day. So historically, there's been a little bit of an information gap. There is a lot of research around newcomers. A lot of you on this call have access to research that you have done on Canadian newcomers. But one of the biggest gaps that we have found in the research that we have been doing and, and what our clients have been doing is we're doing research with Canadians that have been in the country for up to 10 years. Those Canadians that have been here for that amount of time are not new newcomers. Those are almost established new Canadians and they have very different needs to new new Canadians that have been in the country, um, but that have just arrived in the country. And because of that gap, we found that it was important to get a granular understanding of the journey that newcomers do go through as they arrive in Canada, from before they arrive right through until they're actually settled in. And that's what led us to build our newcomers community. So we built this community with over 400 members of new Canadians that have been in the country for 24 months or less. We're continuously growing this community as we also do understand that there is a need to understand the later, more established new Canadians. So we are bringing in more, but for the purpose of this research that we did in the community, we purely focused on that zero to two year mark so we could get a complete understanding. And using an online community gives us the capability to do both qual and quant research within the community. But one thing that I must say, I don't think that we could have picked a better tool to do research with Canadian newcomers. An online community is sort of built with social media in mind, where community members can actually interact with each other. So when we built this community, I didn't expect it to be, well, the community members to be as engaged as they are. We work on a lot of communities. I've done a lot of communities in my, um, at, in my career at Ipsos, and I've never, ever seen a community as engaged as what this newcomer community is. And the reason being is that these people have been through a life-changing event. They've completely flipped their lives upside down. They've left friends and families. A lot of them are here in Canada on their own. And by using an online community as a tool to do this research, they really opened up and they were eager to share their, their, their feedback with us. Not because we're giving them people to talk to and people to interact with, but they understand how difficult immigration is. And by creating this community, we're giving them a voice to share with organizations such as yourselves on what we can possibly do to make the arrival of newcomers a lot easier. So again, a community tool was by far the best tool that we could have used. And because it has been so successful and because they are so engaged, we've decided to keep it open and continuously grow it. So our clients can tap into it at any point in time that they really need to. So this presentation that I'm gonna take you through today is just the starting point. We're gonna take you through the journey to Canada and really show you how they start to establish a new, a new life in Canada and some of the early stage brand opportunities that come with that. That said, that is just the tip of the iceberg. We have collected a lot more data. We do have a lot of insight around the Canadian newcomer that we gathered through the same research project, but there is still a lot more to explore and a lot more to understand. So the community is there for us to tap into when we do need it. So 
jumping into it now. So although the reasons why newcomers are coming to Canada, the reasons may be they may be at different uh, life stages. Um, they may have different reasons for wanting to actually immigrate. But once they do make that decision to immigrate, the emotions and the experiences that they go through, regardless of where they come from or what life stage they're in, is similar in every way. So to start off this session, let's have a look at what are some of the main reasons why newcomers are choosing to immigrate, not why they're coming to Canada, why are they choosing to immigrate? So working through the community, many of them, nearly a huge, huge portion of them, want to escape violent and unsafe situations. A lot of newcomers coming to Canada are escaping countries that have um, high crime rates, violent crime, there's war, political unrest, um, corruption within the government, lack of public welfare and development. So people that are coming from countries where they feel unsafe, they start to sort of form a decision that we need to immigrate. When people have children, there is a much larger driving factor um, or force behind them wanting to immigrate. Parents with children want nothing more but to give their kids the best life and opportunities that they possibly can. And people coming from countries that are unsafe or don't have that opportunity for their children to have um, the, the most opportunities that they can, it's a huge driving force to get them to actually want to immigrate and make that decision that we the only way that we're gonna do this is to leave the country that is our home. And I'd like to tie this together with um, a quote from one of our respondents. As I do think that it sort of brings everything together quite nicely. This member in our community said, it was a decision that needed to be made sooner than later. The current state of affairs in my home country were becoming more and more alarming. We found ourselves living in cages, heavy home security, and constantly worrying about our children's safety. The amount of corruption within the government is unbelievable, crippling a once strong economy, allowing crime to run rife. Our children's future was our priority, and the only way to ensure a better life for them was to leave. So I found that that quote tied that together really well. Stagnation in work and career paths. This is more so with the younger community members that we had, coming from countries with much larger populations where competition is high, there's slow economic growth and opportunities are diminishing. So because of that, they feel the only way that I'm gonna grow in my career and in my work or individually is if I leave my country and go somewhere else where there's better opportunities. So, if I had to tie all of these things together and try bucket them into one pool, essentially the reason why people are immigrating is because they in search for a better life. They know that they're not going to have that in their home country and the only way to do that is to leave. Here's another quote from one of our community members. We decided to move to Canada because the quality of life in our home country was becoming worse and worse. The education system isn't great, and we could see that our kids would not have good opportunities later in life. Our employment situation was unstable, and we felt like we were moving backwards. It didn't make sense to continue being unhappy. So this prompted our research into Canada. So that quote there almost brings all of those elements together, whether it's in work or with children or with safety. Okay, so now we know why people are choosing to immigrate. Now, what are some of those reasons why they're actually choosing to come to Canada? What makes Canada a great place for immigrants to come to? And a lot of these you will know already. Canada has an open and welcoming economy. It's perceived to be easier um, to actually immigrate into Canada when compared to countries like the UK, the US, or in Australia. Canada has a, has a developed economy, so there's more growth opportunities. Canada is multicultural. Just look around you. I really don't need to say much, much more about that. I am somebody that's been fortunate enough to travel around um, the world quite a bit. I've been to many different countries, and Canada is the only place that I've been to where I haven't felt like a tourist or a foreigner or I don't belong. 
Canada is the only place where I've felt that I actually belong. And it's because it is so multicultural. Canada is peaceful and low crime rates. So like I mentioned, when they're deciding to immigrate, safety is a big concern. And because Canada is peaceful and has those low, low crime rates, it's really a place that newcomers want to go to because that is one of, one of the biggest things that they want to escape in their home country. Canadian people are polite and kind. The Canadian reputation is very, very true and newcomers know that. It's a country with public welfare and infrastructure. There's running water, there's electricity. It really allows newcomers to sort of move into a first world country and experience having those sort of things available to them. And then lastly, freedom of speech. Newcomers can live as they are. So now that we know why they're deciding to immigrate, we know why they're choosing to come to Canada, let's have a look now at what that journey is that they actually go through. So what, uh, what I'm gonna take you through for the rest of the webinar is a look into each one of the journey phases. When we started this research, we didn't group them into journey phases. These journey phases came out naturally as we started um, with the actual research. <clears throat> So we're gonna start off with the pre-arrival phase and that is the that starts with that initial decision to move to Canada. And within this pre-arrival phase, there's an endless list of things that newcomers need to do. Then we're gonna move into the waiting period, which is almost a subgroup of pre-arrival, but the research that they do in the waiting period is a very, very different. And that's why it's important that we separate, separate the waiting period from pre-arrival. Then we're going to move into post-arrival. This is as they land in Canada. And then we're going to end off today's session with settling down and how they settle down in Canada. Yeah, so to kick it off, the pre-arrival phase. Like I said, this is when that initial decision to move to Canada has been made. And it's within this pre-arrival phase that there is an endless list of tasks that they have to do. This is where major decisions and actions need to happen. There is a lot to do and it's extremely emotional. And because of that, it brings a lot of uncertainty and anxiety, which actually causes fear with, with newcomers. They rely heavily on social media and friends and family net, networks for people that do have friends and family already in Canada to really research and get an understanding of the lay of the land in Canada. So what are some of the things that newcomers have to do in preparation for the big move? It's all about wrapping up their life in their home country. They need to settle all of their finances. They need to settle on where they're going to live in Canada. Canada is a large country, so they need to find where do they want to make their home. They need to sell properties or cancel lease agreements um, from their current accommodation or their current houses that they have in their home country. They need to arrange temporary living arrangements. And this is on both sides. This is in the country that they came from, as well as once they arrive in Canada. People selling their houses, um, it, it, let me take a step back. It's actually, it's, it's quite difficult to predict how long this process is going to take. So it's difficult to plan around, I need to sell my house now in order for it to be sold and ready to go by the time I get my permits. So a lot of the time people will sell their houses and they will still have to wait a little bit longer. So they'll find temporary living arrangements in their home country. And then once they arrive in Canada, a lot of people will have to find temporary living arrangements before they can find their long-term arrangements. They need to sell all of their belongings. Not everybody does this, but a large portion really dismantles their old life. They sell everything that they own and they only hold onto um, certain items such as sentimental items. Uh, some people may ship some of their belongings, but the vast majority will take the bare minimum with them. The documentation is crazy. There is so many documents that newcomers have to put together for their application. So gathering all of those documents, getting them together for their application takes a lot of time. Um, and there's a lot of stress that does come with that. They need to take required, the required exams, such as medical exams or the English exam um, to submit for their permits. 
And somebody that has done that English exam that is English, I'm 100% English, and I felt that exam quite difficult. So it does take a lot of um, studying before they can do that exam, which again, causes a lot of stress that comes with it. But if there's one thing to take away from this slide, is the research that they do within this phase. They are not looking at who am I gonna bank with, where am I gonna get a SIM card, who's gonna be my cable TV, where am I gonna buy my groceries, um, where am I gonna get my furniture? They are not looking at that at all in this phase. What, are, what they're looking at is where am I gonna live? What's it like to live in Canada? What are the winters like? They are researching things that they can do once they're arriving in Canada. So all of the research within this phase is about Canada in general. They're not looking at brands or anything within this phase of the journey. And that is important to take note of. But finally, it's about being mentally and emotionally prepared. Because you are moving away from friends and family, you are making big decisions that you fear that you might regret down the line. You need to prepare yourself for failures and you're gonna be taking these risks and it may not work out. So it's really important that you prepare yourself emotionally um, when immigrating. And a lot of newcomers find this quite emotional. And because of all of this, it creates that uncertainty and anxiety. So what are some of the things that newcomers worry about when thinking about life in Canada? Looking at financial stability, there is a big concern about starting from scratch. Immigration is extremely expensive. A lot of newcomers are spending their life savings uh, they're liquefying their assets and they're using all of that money that they have in order to get themselves to Canada. So there is that fear of starting from scratch, having to rebuild financially um, from absolutely nothing. Building a credit score. Now, this is something that I can safely say nearly every single one of our community members spoke about. Newcomers coming over to Canada, despite having a really good credit score in their home country, once they arrive in Canada, they start from scratch. They have absolutely um, zero of a score. So the fear that they have behind that is they worry, am I going to ever be able to buy a car, let alone a property in the future? So credit score is a huge concern for newcomers. Geographical, economic, and environmental challenges. These are things uh, like language barriers where people don't speak English or French as their first language. They worry about how am I actually going to fit into society and get around. Um, a big one that came through here is adjusting to the harsh Canadian winters. This is something that, again, majority of um, the newcomers in our community spoke about. The cold weather in Canada is a big concern for newcomers. They worry about do they have the right clothing for this? Are they gonna actually get through the winter? Are they going to be able to live in such cold temperatures? Social and cultural challenges. So these are challenges where we know that people are leaving friends and family behind. They're coming over on their own. A lot of them are a, a little bit older and they're worrying about how are we actually gonna forge new friendships and relationships? Where are we gonna, find a support structure or how are we going to find a support structure that we had in our home country. Um, so that is a challenge now that they have to go through moving to Canada. But lastly, the general immigration anxiety. And this stems from that endless list of things to do, those difficult decisions that they have to do in wrapping up their, their old life in their home country. They worry about, am I making the right decision? What if this fails? Where will I be? In the next couple of years. But despite all of these fears and challenges that newcomers have, there is a lot of excitement that actually comes from immigrating to Canada. So yes, I have all of these fears and I'm uncertain and I'm anxious, but I'm excited at the same time. There's something very special about being able to start off fresh and have these new growth opportunities for themselves as well as their families. They're, they're looking forward to experiencing better public welfare facilities and infrastructure to know what it's like to actually live in a first world country. 
they want to enjoy the the natural greenery and the beauty that Canada actually has to offer. And Canada really is a beautiful country, and people are looking forward to being able to explore that um, and, and travel around Canada. And lastly, having peace of mind about not having to worry about safety. As we saw in the beginning, the reason why people are choosing to immigrate is that safety. And coming to Canada, they, they want to feel what it's like to not have to worry about safety and feel safe. So that is a huge, huge thing that really excites newcomers. So as we've mentioned throughout this webinar, I am a newcomer to Canada. I've been able to relate with a lot of the newcomers uh, within the community and the stories that they've been able to share. So I wanted to share a bit of a personal story through each phase of the journey to sort of bring things to life a little bit. So this is a picture of my wife and two children. This is our last dinner in our house. We had sold our property, everything went through. We thought that we had planned this perfectly, our house sold and we, got an estimate of about two more weeks before we could actually leave um, South Africa to come to Canada. So we thought that we had planned this perfectly. From here, we would move into our Airbnb before we come to Canada. The build up to this was extremely emotional, extremely stressful. We stripped ourselves naked. We don't own any property. We only have our clothes and a couple sentimental items that we'll be taking with us. So the feeling within this phase before we move into the waiting period was we really don't have anything. We have dismant dismantled our life. We have um, submitted everything that we need to do. And now we move into the waiting period. So this in the waiting period, this is where newcomers have submitted all of their documents. They've done everything that they need to do. They've dismantled their life for some. Um, some people will wait, but a lot of people start dismantling. And once you're in the waiting period, there isn't really much more for you to do, but wait until you get your permits or your visas so you can actually leave to Canada. And for some people, this might take a really, really long time. Some people it takes weeks, some people it takes months, some people it even takes years. Um, in, in the waiting period. But why is this period so critical? If you remember when I spoke about research in the pre-arrival phase, it's about Canada in general. It's within this waiting period where more research starts to happen around brands in particular. They start framing opinions and perceptions around different brands, and they start to establish a consideration set for different brands and companies. And the reason why so much happens within this waiting period is because they have time on their hands. They are in limbo. They know once I land in Canada, I've got a whole new list of things that I need to do. So if they can tick off some of those items while they're in this limbo period um, to make things a bit easier when they land, that's what they start to do. So they will start to research, who am I gonna bank with? Where am I gonna get a SIM card? Um, where am I going to get my home internet from? They're going to start researching all of this so they can actually be prepared for when they land, they know exactly where they need to go. A lot of newcomers actually attempt at acquiring new products and, or products and services while they're in their home country. A lot of newcomers said that they tried to open up bank accounts so they could move their money over before they actually arrived. Um, or getting SIM cards delivered to them in the home country so they know once they've landed, they're actually able to um, be connected. They don't need to go try and find a SIM card somewhere. A lot of people also start to fill their shopping baskets. So what they will do is they will go onto Amazon, they will go onto um, Ikea or Walmart or wherever it might be, and they will start filling these shopping baskets of furniture and stuff to finish their house once they arrive. They don't check out yet because they don't know when they're actually going to arrive in Canada, but it starts giving them peace of mind knowing that I'm preparing as much as I possibly can for my arrival in Canada before I actually get there. But like I mentioned before, this period can take long. It can take a week, it can take months, it can take a couple of years for some. But these brand perceptions and consideration set, uh, sets really start to happen in this period. So it's really important for brands to take this opportunity to try reach newcomers while they are in this period. So once they do arrive, they consider you um, 
to, to be their provider or buy products from you. So what are the some of the potential opportunities that lie in the pre-arrival and waiting phase? So we know that anxiety, uncertainty, and fear is prime uh, within the pre-arrival and the waiting period. So is there a way for brands to redesign products um, and value propositions to give newcomers one thing to, list, uh, to worry about, a sense of comfort or, or security? So could we deliver service and products in their home country? Some yes, some no, but what can we do to maybe make it a bit easier um, for newcomers? Could we offer products in their language? These are people that are worried about the language barriers that they may have, or could we give them trial periods or money back guarantees on certain things that they do buy while they're in their home country? Secondly, we know that they leverage social media and friends uh, networks for recommendations and advice on what they should do, who they should bank with, um, where they should shop. Um, they rely heavily on social media and friends um, for sort of making decisions on how they're going to do this. So is there a way to increase awareness and knowledge um, of your brands uh, with these different communities and encourage usage? So could you have a presence in community events and festivals? Could you get testimonials maybe from other newcomers or offer referrals and incentives to newcomers that are already in the country who will be referring to friends or other newcomers coming into the country? But most importantly, we need to make use of this crucial period. Like I said, it can take long, so it's important for us or for businesses to stay top of mind and relevant and encourage purchases from the home country itself. So could we be sending them newsletters, keep them up to date? Could we be supporting them on um, decisions or helping them make decisions on things that are maybe outside of your direct offering? So are there things that we could do to help a newcomer um, come to Canada? So I want to jump into another personal story. Like I told you from the previous one, it, we were moving into an Airbnb for two weeks. It has now been three Airbnbs later and three months later, and we are still waiting. Again, this talks to that unpredictability on being able to plan to the T how things are going to work out. So we had certain delays on our permits. So we ended up having to live in an Airbnb for well, multiple Airbnbs for an extended point of time. So this is a picture of one of the Airbnbs. There's my wife, my two kids, and my cat. It's a one-bedroom unit that, that we stayed in, um, which made things really quite challenging. Remember, we had stripped our life of everything that we knew, all of our belongings, and now we are living with other people's stuff, waiting, waiting to go. So it was quite difficult, quite emotional, but we had a lot of time on our hands. It was within this period where we knew exactly what do we need to do for a bank account? Where do we need to go once we arrive in Canada? We had a whole checklist of things that we needed to do. And just like the community members, we started shopping. We started filling those baskets. And that gave us a sense of security, knowing that we already have everything. All we need to do is check out. And once we're there, we can start to rebuild. So it's an extremely difficult time but there is a lot of time on your hands. You, you are sitting in limbo, you can start your research and form your consideration set of brands that you're gonna use once you arrive in Canada. But finally, it comes time to go. You receive that, that, that email to say that your permits have been approved and your visas uh, are gonna be stamped into your passport. You have this huge relief that I can finally go now. This is a picture of me, my wife, and two kids at the airport. All of our belongings are in eight suitcases. Everything that you see in this picture is everything that we own. This is an extremely emotional time for a lot of newcomers. This is where you say goodbye to your friends and family. You don't know when you're going to see them again, and you are heading into the unknown. You've done your research, but you don't really know what to expect until you land. But things are finally moving. You've been in limbo for such a long period of time that you can start to move forward. And from there, we move into the post-arrival phase. And this is where your expectations start to become a 
reality, but there is that excitement about everything Canada actually has to offer. So what are some of the key challenges that newcomers have once they arrive in Canada? And I'll start off with a quote from one of our members. This member said, although we prepared ourselves by researching and studying, facing reality is very different from what one might plan for when one does not know. So what are some of those challenges? You have that initial culture shock. This is more so specifically with people where English or French is not their first language. They've been worrying about not being able to get by um, adequately with the language barriers that they have, and that becomes a reality. There's challenges in finding work. A lot of newcomers coming over don't have jobs lined up, which means that they now need to start finding work. Finding long-term accommodation without a credit score. So the credit score comes through here again. So these challenges that they face almost immediately after arriving that they knew that they were going to face becomes a reality. That credit score is very real and now they're feeling that. Weather remains a big challenge for most. A lot of people can't actually comprehend what minus 20 actually feels like. Um, so now they need to start shopping for proper boots and coats depending on the time of year that they arrived. Some people get that initial shock if they arrive in the winter. Juggling work and studies. A lot of newcomers coming over to Canada actually have an employment offer already in place for a lot of them. And these employers have been waiting for, for their newcomer to arrive in Canada to be able to start working. So what happens is when these people do come over with work already lined up, they're almost expected to start working immediately. And that becomes very difficult to actually start to rebuild your life while you're busy working. So it does slow things a little bit. And a lot of people find that quite a challenge. Information is limited in some areas. We had a lot of people um, complaining a little bit about driver's licenses and exchanging. So some countries you can exchange your driver's licenses um, directly. So you can take your home country driver's license and change it for a Canadian one. But the majority of countries you can't actually do that. So once you arrive in Canada, specifically if you're not living in the city and you do need a car, you have to go and do your driver's license again. And where this becomes tricky is a lot of newcomers that do require a vehicle can't purchase a vehicle until they've got a Canadian driver's license. And this challenge now forces them to use Ubers or rent vehicles where they can use their international driver's, driver's license because they can't simply just go and purchase a car to get around. So that driver's license comes up quite a bit. Um, they, they struggle to understand the concept of a family doctor or walk-in clinic. So these things that they need to figure out. But lastly, the high cost of living. This is more so very early upon arrival. For those people that don't have jobs or people that do have jobs, that first, that first month or two before you get your first Canadian paycheck, you are still living on your home country's um, uh, currency. And Canada has an extremely strong currency, so their currencies can only go so far. So they find it really uh, quite a big struggle to actually get by those first couple of months until they start to earn Canadian dollars. Another thing that came through quite a bit was insurance. So despite having an insurance history in your home country, when you arrive in Canada, let me use um, the, driver, the driver's license thing as an example, or purchasing a car, newcomers are basically considered as new drivers, despite some of them mentioning that they've been driving for 10, 20 years. They arrive in Canada, they have to do their driver's licenses. And look, and what that means is that they've got less than one year driving experience, which means that they are paying a much higher premium uh, for their insurance. So these are some of the struggles that they do face once they actually arrive in Canada. But despite these challenges, there is that excitement about starting off fresh and bringing back normality. Um, it's about getting new furniture, trying new products. There's lots to explore. It's almost like they are on holiday everything feels new and they can start to look for their long-term accommodation. Here's a, another personal story. This is a picture of our first night in Canada. As you can see, we've got no furniture. We are having our dinner on the floor, uh, but this is exciting. We've been in limbo for so long and now we can actually move forward and start to rebuild our lives. 
And from here, we move into the settling down phase. And this is where they start to establish a sense of belonging in Canada. And maintaining ties back home is really quite important in this time. So maintaining ties back home never really disappears with newcomers at all. And this is evident in their actual behavior as well. So what we start to see newcomers doing is they join home country communities. So they will find other communities, mostly on Facebook um, or WhatsApp different groups, and they will actually arrange get-togethers. These get-togethers give newcomers the opportunity to share experiences with people from their home country that have been through the same journey that they have been on. And it's more so to sort of keep their culture alive and give them a little taste of home. And speaking of a taste from home, it's within this phase where they start to shop around. They start looking for ethnic grocery stores where they can buy foods from their home country that they, that they used to eat. Yes, they've tried a whole bunch of different Canadian um, products, um, but they start to miss home. And this flavor from home gives them that nostalgia that they miss. Then what do they do? Then they start inviting friends and family to visit them in Canada. Like I mentioned, they've been through a life-changing event. A lot of under, uh, families are, um, don't understand why people are immigrating and why they're leaving, but it has been an emotional journey. And what they really want to do is they almost want to show off to their friends and family what they were able to achieve and show them this is why we actually moved to Canada. They can start living their life again. I really love the section in the research where we spoke to them about entertainment. So when we spoke to them and asked them, what do they do for entertainment? A lot of them spoke about large scale entertainment or large scale events that they actually attend, like sporting events or going to concerts. And the reason why they were saying that, which is something that I really loved, is that going to sporting events they can scream with other Canadians for the same sports team. Going to concerts, they can sing along to songs with other Canadians. That gives them that unique feeling of belonging. So these large scale events really helps them connect with other Canadians, um, which is something that they really want to get through in their settling in phase. Yes, maintaining ties back home is important, but they also want that sense of belonging. So what are some of the potential opportunities that lie in the settling in phase? Is there a way for brands to play a role in becoming that bridge back home? So can you have a strong presence in these local communities with newcomers to tap into? Or is there an opportunity for brands to assist with new Canadians, establish a sense of belonging um, in Canada? So could we give them guidance on long-term goals, such as buying a home or planning for retirement? Or could we arrange events that integrate newcomers with Canadians? So here is my final personal story that I'd like to share with you. So here's a picture of me, my wife, and two kids. As you can see, we've got smiles on our faces. We, are, we have been here for just over a year now. We are 100% settled in. Our houses are furnished. We have, um, uh, we have cars, wife has a job, we are happy. We have survived our first winter. We are very much prepared for what's coming this next winter. If you have a look at the top right corner there, that's a picture of one of these home country community groups that I spoke about. And the reason why I wanted to share that picture is again to reiterate that working through this community with these people, them sharing their stories, myself, almost had a story that I could share that related to everything that they were saying, which ties back to regardless of where people are coming from or where they are in their life stages, once they start that journey to Canada, the experiences and the emotions and the things that they do are very similar in every way. So to conclude this, one, uh, this um, webinar, Immigration is an emotional roller coaster filled with fear, uncertainties, and challenges, with many tasks to do, along with excitement about starting a new life. 
and for brands to be relevant and stand out, they need to focus on what they can do to alleviate some of these challenges and create peace of mind. As in some instances, convenience and certainty is more powerful than the brand itself. And lastly, brands need to meet newcomers where they are in the journey and look at them differently to Canadians or different ethnic groups already established in Canada. So I hope you've, um, you've learned a lot today. I know that we had to move through it relatively quickly. What I've shared with you is just a small piece of uh, data that we do have available. The community lives on. We are able to tap into it for any pieces of research that we might do. This particular research did focus on new Canadians, zero to two years within Canada, but we are going to be, and we are actually already expanding that to further down the line, as we would like to explore later on, how do things actually change once they've settled in and become more established new Canadians? So that will be available to use within the community. So I hope you've, you've learned a lot. I hope you've enjoyed today's session. Thank you, everybody.